On Saturday morning, a large explosion damaged the Crimean Bridge, the longest bridge in Europe which spans the Kerch Strait and connects the Kerch Peninsula of Crimea to the Taman Peninsula of Krasnodar Krai in Russia. Ukrainian security forces seem to claim responsibility for the attack, with the Ukraine Ministry of Defense implying on Twitter that further attacks on symbols of Russian power were to come. Obviously, this didn't go down well with either the Russian public or the Kremlin. And on Monday, Russia retaliated by striking critical infrastructure in various Ukrainian cities, and apparently bringing Belarus into the war. So, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at what happened on the Crimean Bridge, Russia's recent retaliation, and what this all means for the trajectory of the war going forward. If you like our videos, then be sure to subscribe. Currently, 70% of you haven't made the jump, so we'd really appreciate your support. This story in Ukraine has been moving so fast lately that we've had to make a number of videos about it in just the last couple of weeks. So make sure you stick around on TLDR EU so you don't miss any of the latest developments. And it really helps us out, and we really appreciate it. So let's start by looking at what happened on the Crimean Bridge over the weekend. Now, the Crimean Bridge is really two bridges. There's a four-lane road bridge and a double-track railway, running parallel to one another. Construction began after Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014, and the bridge opened in 2018. It's the longest bridge in Europe, and was presented by both Putin and the Kremlin as a symbol of Russian power. Anyway, on Saturday morning, a large explosion occurred on the road bridge, which quickly spread to the parallel rail bridge. Originally, there was some speculation that the explosion could have been caused by either a missile or a boat filled with explosives, but CCTV footage released after the attack seemed to suggest that it was actually a truck filled with explosives. The explosion was pretty enormous, and the blaze quickly spread to the rail bridge parallel. It looks like there was some sort of tanker containing flammable material on the rail bridge, because a massive fire quickly ensued. Now, Ukraine didn't explicitly claim responsibility for the event, but there were some pretty strong hints. For starters, about a month ago, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry released this tweet, depicting a floating HIMARS system aiming at the Crimean Bridge. After the attack, they released a tweet comparing the events on the Crimean Bridge with what happened to the Moskva, strongly implying that Ukraine had carried out the bombing. Similarly, Ukraine's head of National Security and Defense Council shared a video of the blast alongside Marilyn singing Happy Birthday, Mr. President, a reference to the fact that it was Putin's 70th birthday on Friday. And one of Zelensky's key advisors warned that this was only, quote, the beginning. Anyway, as you can imagine, this won't have gone down too well in Moscow. For starters, the attack threatened Russia's already strained logistical operations in Kherson. The Crimean Bridge is one of Russia's main transport routes for military equipment going to Russia's southern front. And if it's out of service, then Russia will instead have to supply its troops in Kherson and Zaporizhia via either a replacement ferry service, the Tomac Railway, or the Metropole Highway. Now, there have been some reports that both the road and rail bridges are back working again, but we've been unable to verify them and neither bridge is likely to be running at full capacity for at least a couple of weeks. So, while it might not be a disaster for Russian logistics in the south, it's still not good news. Nonetheless, it's pretty terrible news politically. The Crimean Bridge was hundreds of kilometers behind the front lines, and was widely perceived as a symbol of Russia's power and Moscow's continuing commitment to Crimea post-annexation. In this context, the bombing will have been politically embarrassing and seriously undermined Russian morale, which is already pretty low. As you'd expect, immediately after the attack, Russian nationalists demanded an escalation. Pro-Russian telegram channels were already furious at the Russian army's retreat in Kherson, and they saw the bombing as a terrorist attack on Russian soil. On Saturday, Putin sacked two senior military commanders in Ukraine, and replaced them with General Sergei Surovikin, a hardliner who used to be the head of Russia's southern military command in Ukraine, and made his name running Russian operations in Syria. 
On Monday, Russia retaliated by staging a series of missile strikes against cities in central and western Ukraine, including Kyiv, Lviv, Dnipropetrovsk, Zaporizhia and Kharkiv. So the fear is that this could trigger a very strong Russian response. We saw yesterday uh, that a residential area of the city of Zaporizhia, a major city in the south of the country, very close to the front lines, uh, was hit uh, more than a dozen. So. As well as firing Calibra missiles from ships in the Black Sea and bombers, there were also reports that a whole load of Iranian-made Shahed drones were launched by Russian forces from Belarusian territory. It looks like these strikes were directed at what's often described as critical infrastructure. Stuff like government buildings and power plants. This would amount to an escalation on the Russian side, because up until this point, Russian forces have mostly avoided targeting critical infrastructure. This was probably because, well, A, it was more likely to provoke an international response, and B, blowing up power plants makes sense if you just want to defeat an opposing army, but it doesn't make much sense if you want to annex territory, as Putin apparently does, because it makes the local population exceptionally hostile. While it might not make an immediate difference to the situation on the battlefield, if Russia continues to apply pressure to Ukraine's energy grid, Ukrainian logistics will struggle. To top it all off, on Monday morning, Belarus accused Ukraine of planning to invade Belarus, and Lukashenko, the president and longtime Putin ally, seemed to imply that Poland was planning an invasion. Tell the president of Ukraine and other insane people that the Crimean bridge will seem like nothing if they touch just one meter of our territory with their dirty hands. In response to the alleged provocations, Lukashenko announced that Belarus and Russia would be deploying a joint regional grouping on the Belarus-Ukraine border. Lukashenko didn't explain what the grouping would actually be for, but it's fair to assume that Lukashenko has edged a bit closer to joining in with Putin's invasion, which he's so far just about refrained from doing. All in all, it's been a pretty chaotic few days, and yet another escalation from Putin as his forces continue to lose ground on the battlefield. And like we said at the beginning, this is a rapidly developing story. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified when we release more updates. Also, TLDR EU is rapidly catching up with our sister channel TLDR UK. So if you love our EU content, lend it a hand and help this channel win the race.